Hey there, it's Ilze B. It's Friday again and I'm here with my stories. Remember, two weeks ago I told you that I am putting a pause to my reading Latvian and further on I will tell you stories and my Latvian language lesson will be incorporated into those stories. And today's lesson or today's stories will be about male names specifically about four male names, names of four men that are important to me. And that is the names of my two sons, the name of my father and the name of my grandfather. These names will serve as excellent examples of four types of Latvian male names because Latvian nouns can be grouped and these names each belong to a different group. I will also tell you why it is important to understand how Latvian nouns including proper nouns are categorized. So stick with me, this lesson is going to be very valuable. During this week I already set the scene for one of the names, that's the name of my younger son Phillips. So I'll start talking about this name, especially because it's April the 6th and that is the names day of Phillips. You may already know that Latvians celebrate names days. I have seen a video where it is explained that Latvians each have their own saints and that we are named in the name of our saints. But that is not true. It has nothing to do with any saints, really. This is just a unique Latvian tradition. Latvians as a nation are not particularly religious. Latvians may mix their religious beliefs together with their other beliefs, for instance, with their superstitious beliefs, with their beliefs in horoscopes or numerology, or with their pagan beliefs. So there are explanations of Latvian names. For example, what are the characteristic features of a person wearing a certain name? And although I don't necessarily believe in all that, it's still interesting. And I will also share some of this information with you. But let me start by telling you what those four male names are and give you a little story about each of them. So, as you know, the first name is Philips. And according to the numerologist Ineta Ventnietze Krieger, Philips is firmly rooted in the ground, determined, resistant, and rationally thinking. But his name, the name Philips, doesn't have a guarding angel. Well, I don't worry too much about it because Phillips has a second name and according to the same numerologist, that name has several guarding angels. The name of my older son is Mikus. And according to the numerologist, he has a strong bond with the cosmos and he has strong intuition. Also, his name does have a guarding angel. The third name I will mention is the name of my father. And that is the name of the names in the Latvian culture, Janis. And I have read that in ancient times only the most reputable man could be named Janis. I don't know how they could determine if the baby would be reputable. Maybe the name of Janis wasn't given to newborns. And finally, the fourth name that I would like to mention is the name of my maternal grandfather. And that name is Otto. And an interesting story about my grandfather's name is that at one time I actually remember that I was still a child and my mother told me that 
there was a change in the law in Latvia and according to that law no double consonants shown below were allowed in personal names so they wanted to rename my grandfather but he had already passed away and it was accomplished that his name didn't have to be changed however I also read on internet that in 2010 there was a couple who wanted to name their newborn baby Otto with double T they didn't get the permission from the registry office and they sued them in the court they won because it was found that there had been other babies named Otto with double T previously perhaps people in those registry offices didn't know the law so this couple one and could name their baby Otto. But now let's talk linguistics. Let's look at all the names when you see them next to each other. Specifically, look at the endings of those names. How does it look to you? What are the most common endings of male names in Latvian? Do you think that they are S and that O is an exception? superficially looking it seems so but that is not true actually each of these names belong to a different category and the real endings are these only the name Phillips has an ending s but the name Janis actually has an ending is and the name Mikus actually has an ending us of course, Otto has an ending all. The most common endings, though, are those of the names Philips and Janis, namely the ending S and the ending Is. Us is not a very common ending, although Mikus is an old Latvian name. Otto seems to be borrowed from another language because vowels o appear only in words that are borrowed from other languages into the Latvian language. Another thing that I would like you to know is that in Latvian nouns are grouped in declensions so these groups according to the endings are called declensions so which noun belongs to which declension? The noun Phillips belongs to the first declension. The noun Janis belongs to the second declension. The noun Mikus belongs to the third declension. And the noun Otto doesn't belong to any declension. I teach more about declensions of nouns and about cases in my course Latvian for English speakers that I'm going to reopen really soon. And why do I call this course Latvian for English speakers? Well, it's because I base my explanations on English grammar. And if you feel that you have forgotten linguistic terms that I use today or in my previous videos, I encourage you to take advantage of my cheat sheet that you can download from my website. I will include the link in the description of this video, so definitely download it. If you are serious about learning Latvian from the very beginning and learning its fundamentals so that you understand how words function and then you can learn to make your own sentences. You may wish to revise those linguistic terms because I'm going to talk about this more in the upcoming videos before I reopen my course Latvian for English speakers. But now I will demonstrate you how endings of those names can change depending on the case. And I will translate one sentence into English, but I will replace names into that sentence. Therefore, there will be four sentences. 
and those sentences will be Otto gives hand to Philips, Philips gives hand to Janis, Janis gives hand to Mikus, and Mikus gives hand to Otto. Pay attention how endings of names have changed depending on where the name stands in the sentence. Otto duod ruoku Filipam. Philips duod ruoku Jānim. Jānis duod ruoku Mikum. Mikus duod ruoku Otto. You can see the same pattern in the video that I made about little Latvian pies called pīrāgi. Pīrāgi is a plural form and a singular form is pīrāks. Therefore, the word changes its ending according to the same pattern as the word Philips does. I'll include the link to that video in the description below. All right, and that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you liked it and found it valuable and that my explanations were clear and that now there is more clarity for you in why and how Latvian nouns can change their endings. This is what I like to teach, so please do tell me if this is what you want to know and if this is what you want me to teach you in these free video lessons. And please, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that little round icon of my face on the screen of this video. But now I'll say bye-bye, atta, till the next time.